We spent three years in Ibera National Park in northeastern Argentina. The cappuccino seed eaters are distributed throughout South America and they don't appear to have any clear geographic barriers that prevent them from exchanging genes. These various cappuccino species are genetically very similar. They breed in the same habitat and they eat the same food. And yet the males of these various species differ in plumage, coloration, and song. Turbeck and her team focused on two types of cappuccinos, the tawny-bellied seed eater and the ibera seed eater, which was undiscovered until 2001. These two species, along with eight others, split from a single common ancestor within the last million years. This relatively recent rapid expansion occurred even as they shared practically the same neighborhood. Normally for speciation to occur, organisms have to be confined to different geographic regions in order to accumulate genetic differences. And we've seen this process occur in, in other radiations, such as Darwin's finches, where from a single common ancestor, they formed many different species that are confined to different islands in the Galapagos. Cappuccino seed eaters in general, and the Ibera seed eater and tawny-bellied seed eater are confined to continental South America, and they lack any obvious spatial or temporal barriers to reproduction. It's unclear what kind of barriers maintain these two species in the same geographic area and keep them distinct from one another. We searched for nests of the Ibera seed eater and the tawny-bellied seed eater. We marked individual birds with a unique combination of color bands, and we collected blood samples from adults and nestlings of these two species. We presented territorial males of the Ibera seed eater and the tawny-bellied seed eater with painted mounts and song recordings that mimicked their own species' song and plumage, as well as that of the other cappuccino species, and recorded their aggressive responses. Both cappuccino species responded most aggressively to the song and plumage of their own species and less aggressively uh, when the song or plumage belonged to the other species, which suggests that both of these traits are jointly used in order to distinguish one another in territorial interactions and avoid interbreeding. We sequence the DNA of the two species in order to determine how they differ on a genetic level, as well as analyze patterns of mate choice in order to assess whether these two cappuccinos ever interbreed in the wild. And to our surprise, we found that even though these species breed side by side and they share the same resources in Ibera National Park, the Ibera seed eater and the tawny-bellied seed eater only ever mated with members of their own species. Since the two cappuccino species are so genetically similar, Turbeck's team essentially was searching for needles in a haystack. The Ibera seed eater and the tawny-bellied seed eater are almost identical on a genetic level. And they can only be distinguished by three tiny regions of their genome that only contain 12 genes. Three of these genes are known to be involved in plumage coloration in other bird species and have likely contributed to the diverse plumage patterns that we observe in this group. Ibera seed eater likely formed as a result of past hybridization between cappuccino lineages and the subsequent reshuffling of genetic variation into novel combinations that encode differences in plumage patterning and potentially male song. Differences in song and plumage alone may be sufficient to maintain species boundaries extremely early in divergence. Work remains to determine if cappuccino songs diverge genetically or if their differences are entirely learned. It's also unknown whether the distinct cappuccino genes associated with plumage are actively expressed. For now, the Ibera and tawny-bellied seed eaters will likely continue mating within their own species, despite sharing the same turf and almost all the same genes. As the saying goes, birds of a feather flock together.